Every year, thousands of people die from foodborne illnesses. One of the most dangerous of these foodborne illnesses is listeriosis. Listeriosis is caused by the bacterium Listeria monocytogenes. Not only is it difficult to pronounce Listeria monocy mon monocytogenes, it's even more difficult to control. So why is it so important to be aware of Listeria monocytogenes in your deli? After all, listeriosis is relatively rare, but it is extremely serious. How serious? One in five people who get listeriosis can die. Seriously, die. Imagine a small outbreak in your deli. Say 15 people contract listeriosis from eating sandwiches prepared with your deli meat that was sliced on a contaminated slicer. Three would die. It's especially serious to your customers with compromised immune systems, the elderly, pregnant women, and newborns. One of the key reasons consumers choose your deli is for your selection of deli meats. Freshly sliced deli meats are a hallmark of any deli and a big contributor to sales. Unfortunately, they're also associated with listeriosis. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, out of all listeriosis illnesses attributed to deli meat, 83% are associated with deli meat that was sliced and packaged at retail. In other words, in a department like yours. So in short, one of the most important product categories in your deli, freshly sliced deli meat, is also associated with one of the most serious foodborne illnesses, listeriosis. Serious stuff. Let's take a look at why Listeria monocytogenes is so challenging in the deli and then we'll cover a few things you can do to minimize risks. Listeria monocytogenes is unique compared to most other foodborne bacteria. While most bacteria cannot multiply at temperatures below 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius, Listeria monocytogenes can. It's active and can grow and spread easily in the chilly temperatures of your coolers. Listeria monocytogenes is a persistent and resilient bacteria it thrives in harborage sites, the nooks and crannies or seams in equipment, floor drains, and food contact surfaces. It also produces what's called biofilm. It's a bacterial film that attaches to a surface and protects the organism. Biofilms can be tough to eliminate as they reduce the effectiveness of sanitizers. Listeria monocytogenes can readily establish itself at a harborage site and cross-contaminate equipment, surfaces, and foods. So far, we've covered that Listeria monocytogenes is a serious organism and it's challenging to manage. So what can you do? Here are three key areas that you can manage that will help to reduce the risk of spreading Listeria monocytogenes and a listeriosis outbreak. Remember these three Ps. Personal hygiene, proactively monitor time and temperature, and prevent cross-contamination. One tested way to reduce the risk of Listeria monocytogenes contamination is through good personal hygiene and the proper use of gloves when handling foods. If you don't remember how and when to wash your hands or that you don't take your apron to the bathroom, check out our video Hand Washing and Personal Hygiene. Proactively monitor time and temperature. Remember the danger zone from our video on cooking, holding, chilling, and reheating? Well, it's the temperature range where bacteria grow most rapidly, between 41 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit, or 5 and 57 degrees Celsius. It's called the danger zone. Keep food out of it. For Listeria monocytogenes, that means keeping food at or below 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, Listeria can grow at low temperatures, so the colder the temperature, the slower the growth. And proper storage of food is proven to reduce Listeria monocytogenes risks. As you're filling a customer's order, tell them to refrigerate deli items below 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius and to follow the use-by dates. A standard at-home use-by guideline for products sliced in the deli is 3 to 5 days for meats and 4 days for cheeses. Lastly, prevent cross-contamination. You probably know that cross-contamination happens when bacteria or other pathogens are transferred from one food or surface to another. If not, we've got a video on that too. You can help reduce cross-contamination by doing two simple things. First, separate raw and ready-to-eat foods, and two, clean and sanitize frequently. 
carefully unwrap, handle, and store ready-to-eat products in a separate area away from raw products to control cross-contamination. Ready-to-eat foods should be kept under separate refrigeration, but if the cooler must be shared, place cooked items above raw foods. In addition to properly separating foods, you must be diligent in your cleaning and sanitizing routines in order to keep this bug at bay. Properly cleaning and sanitizing equipment and utensils can reduce the potential risk of listeriosis from the consumption of ready-to-eat products prepared in your department by as much as 40%. It's important to clean all of the food contact surfaces in the department, but pay particular attention to your slicers. Deli slicers get used a lot and can be readily cross-contaminated. Seals, cracks, and places where knobs and handles are attached are all harbored sites where Listeria monocytogenes can linger, grow, and easily spread to sliced ready-to-eat foods. Check out the job guide Deli Slicer Cleaning for guidance on keeping slicers spick and span. So many of the foods you sell are ready to eat, like cheeses, deli salads, smoked fish, and sliced lunch meat. They don't undergo any further cooking, so if they become contaminated with Listeria, it's serious. While listeriosis is serious business, following sound food safety practices will help prevent the spread of listeria monocytogenes and outbreaks of listeriosis. Just remember to keep up on your personal hygiene, proactively monitor temperatures, and prevent cross-contamination. These simple steps can help you mitigate a serious threat. Don't worry, if you have any questions or can't quite pronounce it yet, Check with your manager and you can always come back to the food safety videos at training.iddva.org.